It's another episode of Social Distancing at the Arizona Chamber, sometimes known as Happy Hour with Hammer. We're joined as always by the CEO of the Arizona Chamber, Glenn Hammer. Glenn, another very special guest joining us today. Why don't you introduce uh, this A-lister? Well, we're very pr privileged to have our Senate President, Karen Fan with us uh, here today. She always does a great job, but I'll just say during this unprecedented pandemic, uh, her leadership has simply been extraordinary. And uh, we, we're just thrilled that she's on the show uh, this evening. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I, and I wish we could be in person, but we can't today. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to ask, uh, a release came out uh, about what the Senate's likely to do uh, tomorrow on Friday, and I would just appreciate if you could maybe talk a little bit about that. Certainly. Fire away. Do you want me just to start, or do you have questions you'd yeah. like to ask? No, oh, just, okay. uh, I, I thought the release was thoughtfully put out. I mean, the legislature, uh, the last official action was very, very positive. It was a very strong, bipartisan skinny budget that included, uh, I believe, 50 or $55 million to fight COVID-19, uh, received high marks across the board, the business community, the public. It was a model. We, 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 were, we were bragging about there was a point in time where the Arizona legislature under your leadership actually did more than the entire United States Congress in terms of funding for COVID-19. So to me, you helped set the standard and it, I'll actually say, I think it really was a model when Congress got its act together and started moving forward on the federal level to address the crisis. Thank you. You know, and I appreciate those comments and, and truly it's a teamwork. I mean, it's great always to have our chamber members on board, our other colleagues down here. So, you know, everything works together like a well-oiled machine. Um, doesn't always mean it's well-oiled, but we try and make that happen. So, um, yeah, so we've, We've had some goals here, if I, if I can jump in at this point. Sure, um, please. Yes, we did the recess. The reason why we didn't sign a die at the time is because this was all brand new. We had no idea what federal funding might or might not be coming at that point. This was on March 23rd. Um, we didn't know if the legislative body was going to have to pass something to allow us to spend any federal money we've, got, we've gotten. Um, quite honestly, we were uncharted territory, so we left, what I say, left the books open yeah. so we could figure it out. And during that time, over these last six weeks or so, um, our Senate has been meeting every week trying to keep everything teed up that if we can come back in, what would that look like? Have the bills, all of our bills, you know, the lobbyist bills, the industry bills, keep them teed up so that we would be ready to rock and roll on a minute's notice. So we've done all of that. As you see, this has gone on, and we are now into May. Um, the, the, we have asked for the House um, for the last three weeks, give us an idea of what you'd like to do. Let's keep it small. Let's keep it maybe COVID-related, maybe just things that are ready for third read, something. And it went from 50 bills to 150 bills to now they, many of the members just say, let's just go back. We want to open committees back up, resume everything and go back into into business and i've been very emphatic in saying if we do that then those doors will be open for any and everybody to walk in um, and sit in a committee hearing doing that you know that's not going to be feasible till june maybe july um, and then in the midst of all trying to get the COVID stuff get out of this get our economy back so um so that's why i our i have a majority of a majority of our of all of our caucus members here um, and all the members in the Senate to sign a die, which we anticipate doing tomorrow at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. We hope that the House will be on board with us um, because we've determined this is the best way to move forward because we cannot work on the problem of getting people back into business if we're still worried about coming back for bills that have nothing to do with COVID and bills that are going to be controversial. It's just, it's not going to work. So if we can sign a die, Monday we start on that special session to start addressing all of those things, the economic development, the business liability, um, the COVID related stuff. We get that done. We will probably have another special session once we get more in the numbers to look at our budgets to see where we are. Are we okay? Can we what can we do? And then the third piece, well, there's actually four now. 
The third piece of the puzzle is right after the primary, I'm gonna start setting up task force subcommittees. And those subcommittees are going to start addressing all of these things. This isn't Arizona, this is the United States. This is every state that came up with different unique issues and we can learn from this, right? And we need our business partners as part of this. We need everybody. Okay, schools, guess what? We weren't quite prepared to flip that switch and say, we gotta go online tomorrow, right? Um, there's questions about uh, constitutional issues, civil liberties, that those need to be asked and looked into. There are questions about healthcare and SNAP benefits and um, all of those things. Let's use this as a learning tool and be better prepared for the next thing that comes up. I'm sorry to say it will come up, we just don't know when. Yeah. Um, and then of course the, the fourth thing that I am putting in place and I will do everything in my power as Senate President till at least January is I would like to get with um, everybody that had bills hanging out there, especially the ones that were ready to go, right? Ready to go up. Let's get them rewritten in October. Let's put an asterisk by them so that we can put the information and say these were 2020 bills ready to go. They already went committee. I have asked my committee members, uh, uh, chairman, if you will, um, please do me a favor. Those first couple of weeks where we usually only just have presentations because we're, we don't have bills, let's get them in the chute. Let's take care of those bills in the first two weeks. Let's get them done, get them out. I've talked to Speaker Bowers. He is agreeable with that. And let's move those out first while we're working on the 21 bills. So that's the plan, Glenn. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, it's 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 a great plan, and I and I just and and, the, and I, I'm glad that you really ran through all the details of it because it's very well thought out. It's very comprehensive. It addresses all the different issues, and 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 we know we we had chamber bills that will die along with the session. We we understand that we're in, we're in a global pandemic, and until we're able to address the pandemic and all the components, which your uh, plan will do. Uh, it makes it very difficult to get to the other side of this. So I, I again, I, I'll just say for our, our Senate president, you're, you're setting uh, to me the example that other state legislatures and our national legislature, the Congress, sh should follow. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I know that um, our members, I know that they're going to need some support and some encouragement. We know that there is a lot of divisiveness out in the world right now. People are they're frustrated, they're scared, um, they're angry. Um, they need to get back to work. We need to get these businesses back open. And all of this turmoil is not helping. And so I am, at, I am calling on our chambers, I'm calling on everybody. Please help the governor, help us all try and get everybody back on the same page. We are Arizonans, we are Americans. Let's work to solve this problem together. And, uh, and leave all the divisiveness aside, please. Beautifully said. Garrick, I don't know if you have any, I, I, I don't know what else I could say. I, well, I, I believe the Senate President covered it all. Madam President, I think it's important that, uh, and you mentioned this in your press release today, the regular session of the legislature is coming to an end, but your jobs as legislators, that goes on. So you, as you said, you're still getting ready for a special session focused on COVID at the appropriate time. Gary, that's exactly correct. And, and to that point, because so many of uh, your audience is gonna understand this. If we do not sign a die and it's regular session, we go back into regular session for whatever, it is. it will be a free for all, right? People will start bringing bills to the board that maybe aren't ready. They can, uh, you know, there's a lot of technical maneuvers that can be done that literally would turn this into a free-for-all. Um, and these, some of these are bills that are not bipartisan bills. Some of them are very controversial. And I am trying very hard to avoid that. Like I said, we need to concentrate on the, on the problem at hand. Um, I realize some of those bills are important to a lot of people. But if we're in session, you know what that means. Anything and everything goes, right? You know, the old saying, no bill is dead until you sign a die, right? And I get that. Um, but if we're gonna concentrate on doing the smart thing, then the best thing to do it is doing it in a special session so we can narrow that, that goal and figure out what needs to get done um, and do it right. Gotcha. 
And, and to me, this steady leadership is so important because a big component here is as we're safely reopening parts of the economy that have been frozen, it's consumer confidence. Things could be open, but it doesn't mean people are going to fully participate in the economy, even in areas where it's safe to do so. So, you know, to me, this attention that you're placing on, on, on working to solve these issues, the healthcare issues, the economic issues, the benefits issues, you name it. I, I, just, I just believe that's, that's really important to, to the general public feeling comfortable to re-enter uh, the economy. That was booming before this hit. Yes, we were so lucky. And, you know, we talk about silver linings. And one of the things I said, you know, because I'm on these calls with various Senate presidents, and I said, you know, we were so blessed and so lucky that we have a governor that had the foresight um, to have a rainy day fund of over a billion dollars. We had a wonderful legislative body that had the foresight. As soon as we saw what was happening, we immediately, you know, um, put all of that extra spending on hold because thank God we have it because the economy is so great was, we'll get it back, yes. but we were able to do that. So I think we're going to be able to ride through this so much easier than so many other states that didn't have the luxury of the things we have. Smart. Yeah, no, we, we agree. And, and I, I mean, we're spending a lot of our time right now on, on, you know, one particular part of this, the liability reform piece of this, that's going to be very important across different sectors. And that's also going to be a huge federal issue too. And I appreciate you mentioning that in, in your opening comments as well. That's correct. Yeah. So I would like to say that um, I would again, love very much for, I appreciate you guys you have been amazing, amazing partners in all of this. Um, we have a governor and we have legislators that really are trying to do the right thing and trying to move our state forward and get us back on the right track. So, you know, for anybody that's listening, if you could reach out to those legislators and, and the governor and let them know, give them a little encouragement, give them a little pat on the back. Um, these are troubling times and uh, we've got particularly some House members, um, well, and Senate members too, that they could sure use a little encouragement right now so that they know that they are doing the right things for the state. We, we will certainly do so. That's, uh, we, we support what, the, what you're doing in the legislature. We, we uh, deeply appreciate the thoughtful leadership of Governor Ducey dur during, this, during this time. And I'll just say, you know, it was neat when I was at the Honeywell facility that's going to be making millions of these N95 masks, uh, the confidence that uh, the Trump administration has in our chief executive. It's, that's a pretty good thing to have as we're going through a pandemic. So Arizona is a model state and you're a huge part as to why. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Madam President. We look forward to visiting with you again soon, as soon as it's safe. Anytime. Thank you. All right, bye -bye. Thank you.